Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel and first of all I'm so sorry I could not upload video from quite a long time because I was on vacation and I will put some photos right here or right here somewhere here but from today we are going to start a series which will be uh, specially dedicated to JavaScript output related questions. I have also covered these type of questions in my previous videos but that was not a completely dedicated videos to output related questions and these questions will bring out some interesting concept and caveats on how JavaScript works internally and very very important to crack any interviews that are related to JavaScript. So without wasting any further time, let's go to our code runner and check out those questions. But before that, you know the drill, do hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed to my channel yet and do hit the like button at the end if you like the content. So let's go ahead. Okay, so first question is, we have this random value named variable and it's, it's, it's an object and has one property called as name and the value of that property is Kiran. And I go ahead and change this to something like this. And now what I'm doing is I'm just checking if the type of uh, random value is not string, then you just have to print it's not a string. And otherwise, you will console log if this is a string. So this is a simple question. Feel free to pause this video and try to crack this by yourself. Otherwise, continue with this video. So uh, if I console log this, if I run this, it says it's a string. Okay, so we have this random value and we have assigned an object to it. But in second line, we have assigned a number to random value variable. So now the type of number, that is the type of random value should be a number, right? And that is true. If you console log type of random value, it is a number. But then number, you are typecasting it to a boolean, right? By using this uh, not operator in front of it. So when you convert the number to a boolean, what would it say? Now the type of random value is number which is a truthy value because it has something in it but when you convert it to not of it then it becomes false right so if this is true anything negating it becomes false so this exact term is returning false and is false equals 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 to string no it's not so it will go to else part and it says it's a string so to convert this, to check this, you can console log type of random value. So what is the type of random value? It's a number. But if you say the type of random value, if it gives you something, it if you're getting something out of it, then it, it becomes a truthy value. So if you negate it, that will become false. So is false equals 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 string? No, it's not. And it goes to else and it says, yes, it's a string. Because I, uh, but ideally it is not a string. But the way you are writing it, it becomes, it makes it that it's a string. So I hope that was an interesting question for you. Um, let's move ahead to the second one. I have this user object. It has one property email that says my email at the rate gmail.com. And it has one method as well that actually updates this email. It takes one parameter, uh, email, and it updates this user's email. Like that. Now, if I use this method and pass my new email, and I console log user.email, what do you think is going to be the console log answer for this program feel free to pause this video and try to crack it down otherwise we'll continue so if i run this you'll get my email at the rate email gmail.com which is this so basically it has not updated anything uh, which we are doing on line 18 what uh, sorry line 8 um why because if you can see here update email it's a function it's an arrow function so arrow function does not have its own uh, context of this. So basically this this is not referencing to this user object. Rather it's referencing to the global object rather. So 
if you are using this update email here and you are doing this dot email this this is a global context and not this user object right here so even if you updated this using this user dot update email it is not actually updating the email of this user rather it is creating one email property on the global scope so if i go ahead and check console log this which is in the global scope you will get that there is this property email uh, new email at the rate gmail.com and rather if you do this dot email you will get the new email so it has updated the email property in the global context but not in this user object why because we are using arrow function here and it does not have its own context of this so i hope that's clear this is very important question usually asked also in the form of what is the difference between a regular function and an arrow function but if it, it's asked in the form of output related question, then this is basically how it can be asked. So prepare well to tackle these sort of questions as well. Moving on to our third question, we have this animals object here, which is a blank object right now. And I have this another object that's dog. It has one emoji. Let me paste this like that. And we have another object cat maybe and it has another emoji like that so now i have this animals and i'm going to assign it a property dog and whatever the values of dog we have we are going to spread it into the animals object as well and along with that i'm going to give it a name johnny and same is what i'm doing for cat so whatever the properties do we have for cat, I'm going to use that and I'm going to give it name maybe like Sarah. So if I console log animals dog, what is going to be the answer of this? So feel free to pause this video. Otherwise, we'll continue. So if I run this, I'll get emoji of cat and name of Sarah. So what's happening here? you have this animal blank animal object you have this separate object now what you are trying to do you are trying to make this object a property in some other object which is animals right so when you try to do that the object will be converted into a string and will be saved as a property in another object so how will you convert so what is going to be the stringify value of this object it's going to be object object something like this animals object object like that so anything that you are saving here and what you are saving you are just saving one emoji with some value over here and one name that's joni right so it will be saved as this in memory location and now you came back to second line which is animals cat and you are doing that same thing but the cat is also converted into object object in memory location this is the same memory location where you are actually overriding the value for the cat as well because now it will search for object object in memory location and it will update that value in there so now when you updated this it will stringify it to object object and whatever the value of object object was there originally which was this has been overrided by this so now when even you will console log animals dog which is ideally your console logging animals object object is what you are seeing here which has been overrided by line 12 so now it has been overrided by a cat so even if you console log animals dog it will give you the same result back with the cat's data so that should be very crystal clear to you how objects are saved internally and how that actually works so if i do this and if i just show you animals you can say how it is getting saved so it's getting saved as object object as the key and the value is this so that's why it's getting updated at line 13 and even when you console log dog at line 15 it is getting it is uh, printing out the data for cat so i hope that's clear now that's it for this video we have covered this and we'll be continuing with this series in my second video as well so if you like the content do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you soon in my next video thank you so much for watching